about it the first pass so we are going to spend uh, more time uh, with it to in the hope of of really getting it solid uh, in each of your minds and we're going to start out by I don't know I guess we'll call it a game all right I call it a game because that removes um, the intimidation of calling it like a quiz or something like that, and, and th this would be a scrimmage game too. This isn't. Uh, this, this doesn't count in the standings, as they say. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to shout out. I'm going to write on the on the uh, projector here, the document cam, a series of pairs of things, and you will tell me. To, you know, formulate your answers, and then we'll discuss them all at once. We will then discuss if it would make sense for one of them to inherit from the other one and if so which one so for example I could say um, beverage Mountain Dew kickstart all right would it make sense for one to inherit from the other yeah, which which way? Which is a super, super class and which is a subclass? <coughs> beverage is a super class. Mountain Dew Kickstart is a kind of beverage. All right, it's a more specific type of beverage. Beverage is a general term. Mountain Dew Quick Start is a generic term. Now I don't know. I mean, as the first example that popped into my head, I don't know if you'd ever write an application where you'd have a Mountain Dew Kickstart class. All right. Um, but you could have like you know, a better example might be beverage and soda for example soda is a kind of beverage milk is a kind of beverage so all those would be now would something like what what would be a case of something that wouldn't be fall into the beverage category uh pardon me pizza pizza is not a beverage and a beverage is not pizza i'm trying to think of something closer pardon me rabbits I'm not sure that's any closer, but rabbits are not a beverage. And beverage, pardon me? Milkshake. Milkshake. Ooh, that's a good one. Would would you call that a beverage or not? No. All right. Okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Sometimes. Depends on the milkshake. That one, actually, that one I could see ruling either way depending on the context of the problem. All right, depending on the problem that you're trying to solve. Does it exhibit the attributes and methods of other beverages, or is it treated more like an ice cream dish? So that would be a good example. Uh, I guess what I'm thinking of, too, is like windshield washer fluid. That's not a... <laughs> well, at least. I mean, it's, it's closer than pizza and, uh, and uh, uh, rabbits were. All right, so windshield washer liquid is not... A beverage even though it's a liquid you know now you could have some sort of hierarchy where you had liquid cleaning supply cleaning liquids beverages and both of those would be a subclass of liquid all right but as it stands so we're gonna do that we're gonna I'm gonna put I don't know five six seven eight up here and take a minute and think about them and then we'll discuss them yes Right. Yeah, in that case. Yeah, exactly. In other words, certain problems and methods in common. All right. What's, what's, a, what's an example of a property that every liquid would have in common? Yeah, viscosity, uh, how much liquid you're talking about, freezing point. All right. Beverages. Beverages have certain properties, uh, or I'm sorry, soda, or no, we said beverages the next. Beverages have certain properties, you know, calories, you know, and, and so on. Yes. Oh, I thought you were saying something. And then soda would then have certain other properties as well. So each one, again, uh, one, of the, one of the synonyms for inheritance is, is specialization. So think of each one as being a more specialized version of the previous one. Yes. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. Um, 
All right, let's, let's jot down a few things. So I'm going to come up with about eight of these. And car, tire. Don't shout out your answers. We're going to go over this. Car, tire. Faculty, student. Plane, helicopter. Pat, dog. Rodent, squirrel. Food, lunch. Um, tree, maple. Plant, leaf. Clothing, shirt. And then finally, let's um, I will just leave it at that rather than me racking my brain. All right, so there's nine of them. All right, so take a second to think about those and then we'll discuss them. And the, the first answer is, is one a subclass of the other? And then we have a little flow chart. If it's yes, we say which is a subclass of which. If the answer is no, then could they both be the subclass of something else? All right. Or exactly what is the relationship between these two things? Because I um, tried to make sure that we're at least somewhat related, so that there's some sort of relationship between them. And therefore, um, you know, if it's not an inheritance relationship, then what is the relationship between them? So take a minute, look at each of these, and decide if there is inheritance or not. All right, car and tire, inheritance, yes or no? How many, we'll, we'll do this, how many say yes? Okay, how many say no? All right, so let's apply the is a test. Is a car a tire? No. Is a tire a car? No. So no. <laughs> Not really means no, all right? Pardon me? Okay. Uh, so therefore, there's not an inheritance between that. A tire is not a car. A tire is part of a car. Therefore, you would have a, a, a structure called um, a, a composite or, or a, a, a composition. Um, in other words, your car class would have four instances of tires within it. In other words, tires are part of a car class. So that's different than inheritance. It's kind of like between what we had earlier between pizza and order. A pizza is not an order. An order is not a pizza. A pizza is one of the parts of an order. I mean, there's other parts of an order too, like whether it's pickup or delivery or uh, who placed the order, or when it's promised by, or, or whatever, all right? So inheritance does not mean the composition. Composition is another structure, so you would not inherit car from tire or tire from car, all right? Faculty and student. Uh, uh, who would say yes on that one? would say no. Okay, 
This will apply the is a test. Is, is faculty a kind of student? No. Is student a kind of faculty? No. So how could we have, where could there, how, how could these two uh, classes relate if not by inheritance? Okay. A faculty, one of, the, one of the things that a faculty could have could be a list of courses. And one of the things a courses could have would be a student roster. So it could relate that way that a faculty has a list of students, probably through a, some kind of course class, but a faculty has a list of students associated with them for that class. So again, that's a form of composition. Any other way that they could relate to each other? Okay. They can, but it's not definitive to say, you know, a rock is a bird. There are no rocks that are not birds. All right? Yes, some faculty people are also students, but you can't make the blanket statement to say that a faculty person is a kind of student and a student is a kind of or a more specialized version of. I guess what I'm thinking of is you could have, I'm not really sure what to name it, but member of the community class, all right? Now, attributes and, and behaviors that each of those. For example, I'm sure student, staff, and faculty get the LC mailings, all right? As do non-students, just, you know, trends, all right? So you could do something like that. You do want to be careful, though, when you do something like that, that you do it in a meaningful way and not just do it just for the sake of doing it. Make sure there really are properties and attributes that uh, exist, uh, properties and methods, rather, that exist on that level. Plane and helicopter. Uh, yes? Yeah, they, they're, they're both flying, flying machines, all right? But a helicopter isn't a plane, and a plane is not a helicopter. So, but you could have flying machine as the superclass, and both would inherit from that. Now, if I said plane and jet, would that be an inheritance? Yes. All right. A jet is a kind of airplane. And then a prop plane is a kind of airplane, too. So they both could inherit from airplane. Pet and dog. Yes? How many vote yes? All right. How many vote no? Excellent. Rodent and squirrel. Yes? <laughs> the, I, the minute I wrote it down, a, a squirrel is, at least for the purposes of this class, a kind of rodent. All right, and I, and and I, I mean, I guess we could go to Wikipedia, but that, that's a good question. Is is really? A, yeah, I'm pretty sure a squirrel is a rodent. Food and love. Yes. No. Okay, let's apply the is a test. Is food a kind of lunch? No. Is lunch a kind of food? not going to drive on the rims, but that doesn't mean that a car is a tire, all right? This is no, because food is lunch, and lunch is not a kind of food. A lunch consists of a lot of things, and again, depending on the problem, food, food would definitely be one of the things that's part of it, but a lunch also now, a location, who's eating it, the time it's being eaten, and so on. So, I think that a lunch is not an example of food. A lunch contains food in the same way that an automobile contains a tire. All right? Tree and maple. Yes? Pretty straightforward. Plant and leaf. 
No. Again, why not? Same reason for the car and tire. A plant is a part, I'm sorry, a leaf is a part of a plant. All right. Clothing and shirt. Yes, a, a shirt is a kind of clothing. All right. So it almost, uh, you know, the one thing I try to stress when I talk about OO design is, is to, to sometimes like take your programmer's hat off and think in real world terms. All right. And even the sentences, do, do, do those things grammatically make sense to say a tire is a car, a kind of car, a car is a kind of tire? You know, if you can say that and it makes logical, reasonable sense, if it's a statement that someone would make and no one would disagree with, all right, then yeah, it's probably a case of inheritance. If it's a case of, you know, is a plane a kind of helicopter? No. Is a helicopter a kind of plane? No. They both are kinds of flying machines, so then you would have a flying machine class, and underneath that you could have plane and helicopter. All right. What does it mean when we say that one class inherits from another class? Well, we, we defined it as being a more specialized version. Can someone say what the impact of that? Yes. All right. Dog gets everything associated with animal. All right. Or in our case, stuffed crust pizza got everything associated with a pizza. All right. Where's the power come in that? Why, why then define a subclass if it's going to simply get everything that's in the superclass? Because you can give it more methods and you can give it different methods for doing the same thing. All right. So let's look at the pizza example we had last time, where we have stuffed crust pizza and pizza. So here is our pizza class. And here is our stuffed crust pizza class. The key concept here is that you code the differences. All right? So, in other words, in terms of attributes, what's the difference between a stuffed crust pizza and a regular pizza? Well, a stuffed crust pizza has an extra attribute, the kind of cheese in the crust. All right? Regular pizzas don't have that. Now, that means that a stuffed crust pizza has three attributes. The two that it got from pizza, size and pepperoni, true or false, and it has a third that only it has. All right? Now, all methods let's forget about the constructors for now, but get some. You, do, you use the same method for getting the size and setting the size as you do with a regular pizza. So you don't need to define a get size and set size on the pizza class. Likewise, get pepperoni. Likewise, we said, well, let's imagine, let's pretend for now that stuffed crust pizza costs the same as a regular pizza. There's no need to redefine the get cost because that lives on the superclass level. However, I would say the one difference between this is baking time. So there's a different rule for how long you bake a stuffed crust pizza, and that's written there. So we can add methods and properties, and we can override methods if it's different for that particular category of things. Yes? You do not inherit constructors. So that's why you noticed that the constructors are duplicated. There's a way that we're going to compensate for that, all right, that we'll go over in, in a couple minutes here, but that's one thing that you do not get when you um, inherit um, one class from another. Yes?
I wouldn't make that statement. No. Or would I? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I don't know. I have to think about that. I, I, I'm not prepared to say definitively. You know, the, the answer to the question of like, is it always a certain way? Very often is no. It's not always that way. I mean, that may be the typical case. And certainly in this case, it would seem reasonable. But um, I'm thinking you could probably think of a situation where there wouldn't, but I, I don't know. I'd have, to, I'd have to ponder that one for a while. Okay. So, there's no get cost because the get cost method is inherited from the pizza class. There is a calculate bake time though method because we calculate the baking time differently for a stuffed crust pizza than we do for a regular pizza. Let's look at the test class here, real quick. One thing I wished I hadn't talked last time, because it might have confused you, is doing the bit of saying stuff crust or uh, pizza equals new stuffed crust pizza. I wish I would have left that for today. All right, but we'll, we'll talk about that again in a minute. Here we're creating pizzas, and we are initializing the size in this case, initializing the size in pepperoni. Here we are calling the no constructor on stuffed crust pizza, so that defaults some things. We can set the type of cheese and crust to mozzarella for the stuffed crust pizza. We can do that because that's a stuffed crust pizza. We could not do that on P or P1. What if we tried to do that on P or P1? What would happen? Well, it wouldn't work, but how would we know that it didn't work? It wouldn't compile. It would say, I don't know what set type of cheese and crust for a regular pizza means. Notice, though, that since all three of these are pizzas, right, because stuffed crust pizza is a pizza, we can add those to the order. And we added them to the order making any sort of changes in the order class. We did not touch the order class. So if we look at this, an order contains a list of pizzas. And when we add to an order, we take whatever pizza gets passed in, no matter what kind of pizza gets passed in, we take that and we add it to here. Now, remember that what we're doing here, though, is we're, we're starting to get into the notion of something being polymorphic. And polymorphic means many forms. A pizza can take many forms. And each one of those forms can have its own rules for doing things. Now, in this case, I, and it's going to call cost method, all right? And the stuffed crust pizza doesn't override that, so stuffed crust pizzas get the same calculation as regular pizzas. We're calculating that for the pizza, for the stuffed crust pizza. So therefore baking time, it's going to get the stuffed crust pizza's baking time for stuffed crust pizzas. It's going to get the regular pizza's baking time for regular pizzas. Okay? So in other words, when I make over here in the constructor, I make it as a stuffed pizza. That living on the heap is often viewed is all methods that are defined on the stuff pizza level. All right? 
even if I treat it like a pizza, because if I the order, I'm treating it just like a pizza. There's no nothing separate in the order for a star pizza. All pizzas go on the same list. So if I stuff crust pizza in that list, that's fine. I can do that because it's a pizza. But if you don't calculate bake time, it's going to call stuff pizza's calculate bake time method. All right, because that's what it has. It has in memory is a stuff pizza, not a regular pizza. So it gets that method. All right. Now, let's look at a statement that we looked at last time and we looked at at the beginning of class, I mean beginning of the course, and let's analyze it a little bit when it comes to inheritance. And I hope this will clarify um, if there's any confusion about that. Pizza P equals new stock crust pizza. All right. So what does that do? In one step, it creates in the stack a variable called P in which we're going to point put a pointer to a pizza. That pizza gets created in the heap. And it gets created as a stuff pizza object. So, there's really two halves of this. Pizza P defines the pointer. And in this case, the pointer is saying that I'm pointing to a pizza. This is getting to be a tongue twister. I'm pointing to a pizza. That's what Pizza P says. It says I have a pointer in memory, and it's pointing to that new object I created, and it's a pizza. So let's say this is memory location 100. This is 100. And so this points to that. What I created, though, is I actually created a stuffed crust pizza object, which has all the properties and methods of a stuffed crust pizza. So if I call get bake time, it's going to get the stuffed crust pizza's bake time for that pizza. Why? Because it's a stuffed crust pizza. So it gets, it's overridden in that, in that class, so therefore that's what it gets. Now here's where the two sides of the equation sort of come into play. If I were to say p dot calc bake time it's going to use the stuffed crust pizza's method to calculate the bake time because it's overridden there. If I say P set type of cheese in crust, is that going to work? No. Why not? Right. The type of pointer, how I am treating the class, the object is the object is the object. It has the methods and properties of that object. How I declare the pointer constricts... I must have bumped it with my uh, elbow or something. Yeah. <laughs> Pointer restricts what properties and methods I can access. So if I declare a pizza variable, 
I can only access the stuff that exists on the pizza object level. So I can't say set the crust cheese, the cheese uh, that's on the, in the crust, because that's not a method that exists on the pizza level. I can say calculate bake time, and it gives me the stuffed crust pizza's bake time calculation. All right? But I can do that because that method is, occurs also on the pizza class. So this is how the compiler is seeing it. And if it's seeing it as a pizza, you can only call the methods that exist on the pizza class. Now the first methods that you get will be the version of the methods appropriate for whatever I've created. So there's two separate things at work here. And if that's confusing, Think if it wasn't that way. If it wasn't that way, I put trust pizza in the variable P. And if it's in crust, well, there is no such thing for a regular pizza. All right? So therefore, it's not going to let you Let's put it this way. It's a lot track of what kind of pizza is in the variable P. It only knows that P points to a pizza. And therefore, it's only going to let me do pizza kind of things to that. All right? Now, that being said, I'll get the right version of them. So I'll get the stuffed crust pizza version of cost if there was a overrided method for cost and for baking time. Now, I declared a variable stuff crust pizza p equals new stuffed crust pizza then I could, then I could access any of the methods that exist on the stuffed crust pizza, and I'd be okay. Could I do this though? Could I say stuffed crust pizza equals new pizza? No, because New pizza is just a generic pizza. I can't necessarily put a pointer to a generic pizza in a pointer that's expecting a stuffed crust pizza because that pizza doesn't have all those different methods. So in a nutshell, the very declaration Class C equals new subclass. The class that you declare the variable uh, at, the class you declare the pointer as being, determines what methods are available on the object C. So only methods defined on the class level can be called on C. Whatever I say new subclass, that determines what version of the method that I get. So in our case, if I say equals new pizza, I get the pizza version of all those methods. If I say new stuffed crust pizza, then I get the stuffed crust version of those. All right? So again, this determines which methods I can see, the variable declaration, and this determines the version of the methods that I get, whether it be on the superclass or the subclass, depending on what's declared and what's overridden and so on. Questions? Yeah. Yes, 
In other words, if I call if I a calc bake type, or a calc bake time, rather, I have crust pizza, or get bake, baking time, it's going to run this method, all right? Because that exists on the stuffed crust pizza class. If I called calculate cost, it doesn't see a calculate cost method for stuffed crust pizza, so it will look in the pizza class and use its method for calculating the cost. And if it didn't find it, it would go up the next super class and so on, up, up the chain of classes until it finds the end of the road and find it. If it hit the end of the road and didn't find it, you get a compile. It says, hey, I don't know what calc cost means, all right, if that wasn't defined on the pizza layer. But it will go up layers, up the levels, until it finds that method, absolutely. Other questions? You know, one, one of my, you know, one of the best programming mnemonics there is, is DRY, do not repeat yourself. And if we look at constructions, they're very repetitive. Let's look at the stuffed crust pizza. Oops. And the regular pizza. All right. Yeah, they're the same. All right, well that doesn't sound good, right? Because what if we decide, I don't know, to change our default pizza from medium to large or change the default to say, well, if they don't specify they're getting pepperoni, I don't care if they want it or not, all right? Uh, again, kind of weak uh, a practical example, but if we did change that, then we'll have to change it in two places. Anytime you hear the notion of whether a change in the business rules causes you to change something in two places, the siren should go off in your head. There's something wrong, uh, something to consider that there might be a problem with that. So how I just say, hey, I know inherit this, but when I call construct with no and super crust or uh, pizza, I, I'm confused. A super crust that, that's the next pizza level. If I constructor on stuff crust pizza, just call this constructor. There's a way to do that, and that's with the super clause. All right. So, that's not Santa Claus, right? So I can do this. What does that mean? That means to call the superclasses constructor that has no arguments. So if I call a stuffed crust pizza constructor with no arguments, it turns around and calls the pizzas constructor that has no arguments. And so this little couple lines of code only needs to be in one place. I don't have to have it duplicated in two places. And I can do that for all of my constructors. I can say, well, if I call the one argument constructor for a stuffed crust pizza, then call the one argument constructor for the superclass and pass it the same argument. And then finally, I can do that for I can do that for this. So this is known as constructor chaining, all right, because we're chaining from this guy to the next guy. Now, I could, all right, 
what if I had a default? You know, because I got this type of cheese and crust attribute. All right? What if I wanted to put that in a constructor? Well, I could default here. I could say, call the superclasses constructor and all the, uh, and by the way, default the type of cheese to mozzarella. So what I'm doing is I'm sort of getting the best of both worlds, right? I'm getting the construct from the subclass, but I'm doing some things that are distinct to the subclass, all right? There's not a, a superclass about the type of cheese and crust because that's not an attribute of a pizza. So I can't write any code there. But say, after you are done executing the superclasses constructor, come back and set that attribute to that, default it to that. Right, 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 right. Well, we, we, well, again, we wanted to, we wanted to build on that. We did, we did the bit where we, we were able to not the uh, calculate cost in here. That exists up on the parent. Now, here's a, I won't say a trick question. What would a form constructor for this look like? So let's say I make a four argument constructor where I can initialize the size whether as pepperoni or not, oh, I'm sorry, not a four argument, a three argument, and the kind of cheese and crust. Change mozzarella to arg cheese. Well, I can't do this. That's for sure, right? Because there is no argument in the pizza class that's looking for a cheese. But I could do this. All right? In other words, if I call the stuffed crust pizza constructor with three arguments, I get the argument of, for the size, the argument for pepperoni, and the argument for cheese, I call the superclasses constructor to handle the size and pepperoni part of it, and then I write my own code to handle the cheese part of it. All right? Actually, apply, applies to e, applies to every class, regardless of whether it's a sub or a super class. You can't have two constructors that both accept the same number and types of arguments in, in either of the classes individually. In other words, that that rule is still a rule. The subclasses and superclasses really don't have an impact on that. But you can. Right. Because you notice here, we have in our pizza class, we have a zero argument constructor, a one argument constructor, and a two argument constructor. Well, we have those in the subclass as well. Plus, we have a third argument one that accepts the extra attribute for stuffed crust pizza. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, you can 
but you want to be careful with that because that could be confusing. All right. So in other words, if it was like a totally different purpose, yeah, it, it is the number and sequence uh, and types of that. Yes. A, a null is a null pointer, a pointer that points to nothing. Um, that doesn't have anything to do with defining a constructor. That may have something to do with calling a constructor. Um, so you could pass a null argument into a constructor. Whether that causes you an issue or not depends on, on how the code is written and what it tries to do with that null. And if you have smart code, it will check to see if that value is null before it does anything. All right. Now, a couple things about Cooper's constructor. One thing is that the super statement has to be the first statement in the constructor. So in other words, let me go and compile this. Uh, almost sure it isn't. All right, and everything compiles and everything should behave the way that it used to. If I switch these around, it will not be able to compile. And I get an error. Call the super must be the first statement in the constructor. It's amazing, it's amazing the range of clarity you get in error messages from that one that tells you exactly what you did wrong, like, yeah, my lucky day, to some, it's like, after you figured out the problem, you get the error message and say, I still don't know what the error message means, even though I, I did wrong, all right? Now, what we can do with constructors, all right? We can call constructor of a class, all right? Let's look at the pizza class. If I call pizza with no arguments, really what I'm doing is I'm calling this class, or this constructor, and I'm hard coding the value of the size is medium and the value of the pepperoni is false. So instead of saying super, I say this. So I could say this am false. And this one, I didn't want to do that, but that's okay. This one I could say what? Arg size and false. In fact, I could do this. If I call no arguments with the constructor, I'll call the constructor and pass an M. So I'll call the one argument string constructor. That one argument string instructor in turn calls the two argument constructor that takes the size and sets that to false. And the end effect 
is that I have a medium, no pepperoni pizza. All right. Again, that's just getting rid of, that's making my defaults consistent. All right. Making sure that my defaults. Um, keep in mind when you define constructors, the idea is you want to set attributes. And you may set defaults for other attributes that you don't have an argument for. Well, you wouldn't want there to be a different set of defaults if you called the one argument versus a two argument constructor or something like that. So you'd want to ensure consistency. Yes. Question? That's the arg sides. Yeah, so, so let's imagine I let's imagine I call pizza constructor with no arguments. What's it going to do? It's going to call one constructor. It's going to hard code an M. So it puts M in our case. What does that mean? It's called two argument constructor. Takes whatever was passed to the, whatever got passed to it, which is an M in this case, and defaults the pepperoni default and calls this, and boom, there you go. Now you can do one or, an, or, or the other in a class. So you can do super or you can do this, but you can't do both. I don't think you can do both. You should be grateful that you can't do both because that would seem to be headache inducing. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. It is for the best. And like super, this would have to be the first instruction in there. All right, so like here, well, it's not really relevant here in, in this one, but if I had some extra code I wanted to do there, I would have to call this first. I believe they're called pronouns. I, I think. Because what is a pronoun? A pronoun is a is a context-specific way of referring to a noun, right? If I said that um, John Doe walked into the room, all right, he had a hat on, all right, how do you know who he is? You know it from context. He refers to probably the last male that you referred to, right? If it doesn't, then it's going to be very confusing. So a is a context specific way to re refer to something. These are also pronouns. These are a context specific way to refer to something. What does this mean? It means this object. This object right here. Call one argument constructor or two argument constructor. If I had the same line of code in another class, it would call that objects. All right? But there's no this and that, right? It's always this. So this means whatever object you're looking at right now. All right? Super means the object that you're looking at right now, their super class. Yes? Repeat, please. You can't. No. You can't because... A main method is a static method. And static methods do not require a instance of the object, therefore there might not be an object that you call. I'd like to do one more thing today. I hope that's okay. All right. Let's say stuffed crust pizzas are five dollars more than a regular pizza. Pardon me? We'll go somewhere else if you don't like the price. <laughs> uh, right, three dollars more expensive than than that. Okay, so now is I want to calculate the price of a regular pizza and then add three dollars to it. Well, we can kind of do the same thing with that we did with the constructor, and I can say. In my, close that one, close that one. Uh, 
I wanted to write a cost method, I could say the cost is calculated as, as I could say double cost equals super get cost. That's going to call the get cost method on the super class and put the value in cost. Then I could say cost equals cost plus three. And then finally I can say return cost. So this is a way where really you're, you're opening it, but you're telling it first call this, give me the value that the super classes gave me for cost, and then go and add a certain amount to it. Question. So really we've seen the three ways that a class can deal with methods in a super class. One of the ways is we don't have them in the super class because they're no different. Set pepperoni is no different for the super class and the subclass. Therefore, we simply don't define set pepperoni, get pepperoni, in the, sup uh, the subclass. Calculate bake time is, is totally different. It's a different rule altogether. All right, in which case we override. And in the case of get cost, sort of extend that method. We first call the supers method, and then we do some manipulation to it and return that result. Uh, we will visit this on Wednesday. I do want to make sure that we're real, real, real clear on this before we go ahead. Uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll think of some sort of example that we can work through together. Um, all right, we'll see you all.